we'll go ahead and get started now. So we're going to talk about uh, a few big topics and dive into some uh, details. Um, you know, resource management is always a hot topic with organizations. How do I successfully uh, uh, perform resource management? What does it mean? What's best for my organization versus uh, other organizations? How are they doing it? And since every organization is unique, um, it's really important you know, to have a basis of you know, what is the basis of my organization's needs um, so that I can successfully build a process that supports those needs. So we're going to talk about a couple of different approaches to how to determine what's best for you with regards to resource management. And then we're going to talk about the different ways you can perform resource management within open air, and then the pros and cons of each way. Um, and then we'll highlight a few other features that I wanted to bring up towards the end of the session. And again, pending, we will have uh, questions if we have time. So what we see with our clients is really we see two primary models with resource management. And it, you can be successful or you can have failure with either model depending on how do you enforce the processes and the tools. Uh, centralized and decentralized. So let's discuss the difference between a centralized resource management approach versus a decentralized resource management approach. Before we do that, let's talk about some key questions that you need to ask when you're trying to determine how to successfully tackle resource management. What issues or challenges is your organization running into? Is, do you have an issue where you're constantly overbooking resources or underbooking resources? Uh, do you have a lack of visibility into your future capacity, or, or do you have a lack of visibility into future needs and demand? Do you have project? Is your projects affected negatively when you can't get the right resources in place at the right time? Also, how is your organization uh, structured? You know, are you have are you more matrix where you have pockets of folks and different cross teams and departments? Are you siloed where everyone works in their own just group and, and they don't um, inter interact with other parts of the organization? Or are you, you know, geographically, internationally, or regionally based? And how does that affect how your resources are, are managed and staffed? Who is responsible for resource staffing? And how do projects get staffed today? So these are, these are big topics that we often talk uh, through our customers with to help determine what is the best approach for the organization um, and, and how to go about uh, putting in a successful resource management methodology. So let's talk about centralized. What is a centralized model? Generally, a centralized model means that you know, resources are uh, managed by a, a few folks that are responsible for managing a pool of resources. So uh, you'll have designated resource managers or managers of teams that are responsible for determining uh, which resources are the right fit and, and when are they needed and to what projects should they be assigned. Um, with centralized model, you, you want to have the ability to do some sort of workflow. So when a project need is uh, identified and uh, the, those resource managers get an alert in some way, shape, or fashion that a need is uh, required and can go about then starting to uh, fulfill those needs. Centralized does require an in increased administration um, because you do have to have that centralized resource manager or managers working in conjunction with the project managers. Um, and resource management in a decentralized model is less interested or less in tune with what's going on with the project. Their main focus is you have these resources. I've provided them to you. Keep them busy. I don't care what they're doing. And you know, let me know when you're not going to need them anymore. And really, that's the approach. And that approach works very well in the right environment. Resor the other benefit of a centralized approach is they do have to the ability to see conflict. So when you have cross requests for the same resource, or you have uh, too many re uh, needs coming up and not enough resources, uh, resource management in a centralized view has the ability to identify those and then work through those uh, conflicts to uh, solve those issues. 
So what does a decentralized model look like? Uh, generally, then, obviously, the opposite of there's no team, no centralized team. Um, and generally, it's when you have folks that are generally working in, so, in a siloed environment where you have a, a, a number of folks and they don't work across different groups. They work within their single group. Um, the project managers generally are the uh, determiner of where resources are worked in, within the parameters of the folks they have access to. Uh, occasionally a manager will also be involved with uh, those, um, and those are kind of the more decentralized approach. The conflict resolution really becomes project managers sometimes arm wrestling with each other to determine who gets a resource and when, and usually it's more of a reactive approach um, than, a, than a, a proactive uh, approach to problem resolution. Um, and it should include a regular review of the overall staffing plan and forecast, you know, some sort of a weekly touch point across all folks who have the ability to, to uh, staff resources so that you do get these conflicts resolved and, and identified as early as possible. So lots of different people making decisions um, and you know, requesting and, and, and staffing folks uh, versus more of a centralized model. And again, it, both can work well depending on how your organization is structured. So Open Air, as all of you know, has a lot of different ways to tackle the resource management gorilla. It's, um, and so which is right for you? Well, obviously, based on what we just discussed, whether you have a centralized model or a decentralized model, uh, will help you determine what is the right approach. So the, the primary uh, tool within OpenAir for managing resources is the resource module, um, which there's lots of different w ways to set the resource module up. Um, from just creating individual bookings to using what's used to old old feature called booking requests to booking approvals. There's a new booking planner, and then there's a new feature, a new concept called resource demand requests. So all of those are different op options you have in structuring uh, your resource module and configuring. If we go to the other side of the fence, the project module, if for those of you that are living in the project module and that's where your best data comes from and you have more of a, I would say, a decentralized view, then you can use task assignments within your project plans to determine function, uh, availability and resource uh, needs. And there is another feature that's pr uh, probably less uh, popular um, that where you can kind of create task assignments and uh, associate with bookings. And we'll talk a little bit about that feature as well. Not something we run into very often. So let's just talk about bookings. Um, certainly everyone on this call should be familiar with the, the concept of a booking, right? It's the scheduling of the resource. You have multiple options for entering bookings. And each option has its own place. You know, so entering uh, a booking or you have the multi-booking forms uh, within the resource module, the worksheet, um, which I find is probably one of the more misunderstood tools but can be very powerful in how you use it is, is entering and editing bookings within the worksheet. There's also a worksheet within the project module um, that uh, we don't see very often used but can be used depending on, again, how your organization is configured and, you know, booking types and how are you using them or are you not using them. You can, you, generally you can use bookings in either a centralized or decentralized uh, model. Um, again, we mentioned booking types. So the nice thing about booking types is having that visibility. And you can also tie alerts to a booking type. So you know, if you're tentatively or soft booking a resource, maybe you don't want them to get an email. Uh, but if you, once you confirm them or convert them to hard booking, you want them to get that alert that allows them to know that they've been booked. And obviously, once you create a booking, whether it be tentative or hard or whatever booking types that you are using, um, it, they're immediately shown on the calendar as reserved. So it's, there's no gap there from, from the time they're created, you know, no matter whether the booking type. So what's the pro of manual bookings? Well, immediately, basically you're immediately scheduling a resource. So as soon as you create that booking, boom, they're booked, they show as unavailable. That doesn't mean there's not jockeying for resources after the fact, but at least they're there and there's, there's a stake on their calendar. You have those notification options for the resource. You can actually optionally alert the resources manager as well when they've been booked. 
Um, bookings can be the gateway to project task assignments, and also that usually is a gateway to entering time. So within the project settings, you have the options to book use, uh, to, to only assign users to tasks that have been booked to the project, that have been booked only if there are no bookings, or anybody can be assigned. So if you want to control, I can only have people assigned to my project after they've been booked, then generally you, know, you can use booked users um, or all users if none are booked, and then booked users. And just a side note, the booked users or all users if none are booked are gener is generally for uh, internal projects. So if you don't book to the PTO project, for example, uh, and you want to be able to allow anyone to be assigned, uh, then you can do so um, and still preserve the client booked projects and those folks being able to be assigned. Uh, the con uh, for individual manual bookings, um, you know, obviously it requires a lot of oversight and a lot of monitoring of the data. Um, and you know, the booking types are a manual. So if you tentatively book someone, you've got to then go back and say, oh, let me go ahead and confirm them now. So there's a manual process that has to be in place to be able to respect the booking types. Bookings are the foundation for resource management, obviously, um, if you're using the resource module. Booking requests. So this is an older feature. Um, that w the concept here was the ability for project managers and potentially other folks in the organization to request uh, a resource or generic. Um, if you are using booking requests, you can enable a feature that only allows a request to be against a generic resource. Um, and then it um, goes through an approval process. This generally is supported in a centralized model where you do have um, a single or, or a handful of resource managers that our job is to make sure that to approve and book named resources. It does give you that nice automated workflow and it does give you approval routing. Um, the, the resource is booked only after approval. Let me, we'll talk about that when we get into the next slide, which are the pros and cons of this approach. So what are the pros for booking requests? The automated workflow is the biggest pro, being able to see which booking requests are submitted, which ones have been rejected, approved. Um, so you have that visibility. You have those alerting capabilities through all the emails. Uh, that Open Air gives you, and so um, that's a, a positive. Um, you do have the, you know, you have the ability basically to limit it to generics only. So you know, resource manage, uh, project managers can only request a generic. It does support booking types, um, independent of the request process. And actually, this slide is incorrect. I'm going to move the no booking until approved down to a con because I believe that's a con and. The, the issue here is with booking requests is it doesn't actually show on their calendar and they don't show as unavailable until that booking request has been approved, which can be a problem if you've got uh, multiple folks involved in the approval process and you have the same resource that's going through the approval process. Um, there's no visibility, uh, as limited visibility as to you know, any potential conflicts until the bookings are approved and all of a sudden now you've got the same person potentially double booked. So um, I, I would put that more as a con, and I'll update the slide deck. Um, and, that, and that supports this first bullet, is no visibility from resource schedule of in-flight requests. So it, it, again, lots of potential for conflicts. And also, if you've requested a named resource and you have a limitation to project assignments based on a booking, it doesn't actually become a booking until it's approved. So the person can't be assigned to a task if you are limiting assignments until the booking has actually been approved, which could delay someone's ability um, to put time in if someone has started ahead of time. Booking approvals. So this is a newer feature, probably t I think 2013. Uh, it's been um, approved, improved in a bit in a couple of releases last year. Uh, this is the ability to really request bookings and go through kind of a more of a timesheet process or expense report process for approval. The benefit of this view is it, it does, as soon as you request 
the person through a booking, um, it, it actually shows up as a booking. And you can, uh, you can configure your booking types to mimic your approval and request process, uh, which works well. You can see, you know, I can see this person is booked, but they are, you know, they're still in a requested slash open type. Um, I can see that this one has been rejected, but they're still showing as available, unavailable. And, and so there's, it gives you a lot of visibility. Um, it also gives you a lot of workflow. And this could support a central or decentral model. I have seen where people have used booking approvals to have the individual approve their own booking. Uh, so having project managers uh, request uh, a person to be booked on their project, um, I've seen that model work. Um, there's a lot of automated workflow and approval routing. And um, again, the, the, one of the benefits we'll talk about is they are booked throughout the process. So as people are being submitted and approved and rejected and, and, and requested, all of that does show on their calendar and you can have those nice charts and views to be able to show what, what part of the process the person is in. Highlighting some of the pros of booking approvals, the automated workflow. Um, is, is a big pro. Um, the immediately booking, so uh, unlike the booking request where no one's actually booked until they're approved, this does su support an immediate booking of the resource. Um, there's the workflow for generics as well. You can still um, you know, have the generics part of the process and have those swapped out uh, prior to the approval. Um, you can also support task assignment and timesheet access um, as part of this process. The, create, the con, a couple of cons um, is the creation does not force approval workflow. What does this mean is you know, if I create a booking and I don't hit submit, similar to creating a timesheet and never submitting it, it can just sit in an open or requested state until the requester sits. Meanwhile, that you've got now showing that person um, as unavailable, um, depending on the different views. So that's, you know, it doesn't force approval uh, submission, rather, right away. So that, that could be considered a con. And then also, you need to make, think through, how do you want your booking types um, to line up compared to your process? Because Booking types can be independent of the open, submitted, approved process, or they can support that process. So you have to think through what are your booking types, how are your booking types going to benefit your organization, and, um, and, and make sure that they are uh, set up correctly. The booking planner. Uh, the booking planner is in a very newish um, feature that was released uh, in 2014. And I would say what I tell customers is that when I think of the booking planner, it's kind of a mix between uh, booking list view and the booking grid view. Um, it does allow you to you know, go through the entire booking process and maintenance, and it does support both a decentral and a centralized model. Um, resources are, request, are booked immediately. It does not support the traditional booking request model, but it does support a uh, booking approval model. Um, the, the, the booking planner, you know, kind of think of it as a Gantt view uh, for uh, bookings. And let's talk about some of the pros and cons. So what are some of the pros? Well, everyone's been clamoring for drag and drop and inline editing. Uh, the booking planner is, uh, I think, the first full feature that allows us to have drag and drop. So being able to extend bookings by dragging, uh, to be able to change dates by uh, in, inline editing without having to open the entire booking. So there's some nice, um, nice UI improvements in that part of it. Um, it also gives you nice views so you can look at the, you can see what a person is booked to and all of the projects they're booked to and you'll be able to see what, you know, what does that do to their um, utilization. So are they overutilized or underutilized on a weekly, monthly basis? You can also flip that around and say, let me show this client project and all the folks underneath it and make sure that that lines up 
with what I'm expecting from a project delivery from a resource perspective. Um, so there's some couple of different views you have there that gives you nice um, data um, in a graphical uh, perspective. Um, you can also do what if analysis, which is something also that's been requested. So you know you can go in and say, what if if I extend this person here and I uh, move this person here, what is that going to do to my resource? Uh, overall percentages. And until you save the planner after making changes, the changes you're making are not applied. So it allows you to kind of do a little uh, fiddling around with the data and kind of see what the outcome of. And then if you like what you see, you can then save it. And if you decide that you don't want to implement those changes, you can just navigate away from the screen uh, to get back to your original uh, data set. So it does give you a little bit of that um, what if analysis. That's another thing that's been uh, a long time request. And you can also use approval processes uh, and workflows, emails, alerts uh, using the planner. So in, with additional um, features in the planner, you can uh, create bookings within the planner, you can delete bookings within the planner, and you can obviously edit bookings within the planner now. The one con about the planner that we hear from customers um, is you know, it's a lot of data in a small space. So it can be a little overwhelming to try to view the planner in a in an efficient way. So making sure that you're seeing the data you want in the way you want it can be somewhat of a challenge. But if you can get that solved, it, it is a it's a good tool for for viewing and editing bookings. Resource demand request. So this is a n very new feature. This came out um, last year as well. And um, quite honestly, when it first came out, we struggled with the why would I need this or what benefit, when would this fit, when would this be a good model. However, um, based on recent experience I've had, we've actually implemented this for a customer. And it is a pretty cool feature, but you got again, you've got to have the right business. And what this feature allows you to do is have a request process that says, I need you know, two analysts with these skills between these dates. And I need 1 p.m. between these dates with this skill. And basically, you can go in and request uh, within like an envelope type, like an expense report and then receipts. It's kind of a request, and then within the request you have all the different uh, specific requirements that you have. And meanwhile, so as a requester, you're entering all the details. Now you have to use skill profiles as part of this, process, as this, uh, part of this module feature. But basically using combination of skill profiles, availability, and then the resource managers in a centralized model can then take those requests and convert those to bookings using a search feature based on best fit, availability, um, and then from there they, those can go into a booking uh, state. Uh, now this does also require a booking approval. So you can have that booking approval go to the manager or even to the resource themselves. Uh, and uh, once they get approved, then you get booking. So it really kind of supports you know, where you have larger projects, I would say, um, where you need 20 people you know, on site to support a go live for a weekend type of scenario. Um, this is really very, very helpful for those types of businesses. Um, and uh, there's a whole process uh, for fulfilling, um, searching. And uh, it's very cool, uh, again, if you have the right business requirements. The, the pro to this approach is you know you have to have it's kind of a team plan. you know what is my project team? what do I need? what's the makeup? and I'm going to go and request my team by the different types and the different quantity of resources needed. Um, the fulfillment process uses a best matching candidate. So if you say I need someone, they have to have this, I'd like them to have this, and they don't, I don't want them to have this. It supports all of those different processes and gives you a list of best candidates based on their skill profiles. Skill profiles are required. I know a lot of organizations don't use skill profiles, um, and some do. So depending on, again, whether you're centralized, decentralized, or how big or small your organization is, uh, skill profiles can be very helpful, even if it's a single skill profile like 
the person um, knows a single skill, and that's all I need to track. So there's some, there's some. Uh, you can minimize the skill profile option within this feature, or you can blow it out and get really detailed. It is a multi-step process. Um, so uh, it, it, as we were, as we were walking through this to understand it ourselves, uh, so that we could either recommend or not recommend it to our customers. There's a lot of steps. It can be a little confusing at first, but once you get um, understand it. Uh, it works pretty well. Also, you know, from a request to creating the booking, you have a gap, um, and that gap means that you know if you're if you are basing your task assignments based on who gets booked to your project, then you cannot sign anyone to a task until the booking gets approved, or not necessarily approved, but created and submitted for approval. Interesting feature here, but it's very it's a very focused feature. So, what I think one of the most popular requests I've seen from the open air community since I've been involved with the product for almost 10 years now is some relationship between project task assignments and bookings. Um, the fact that they are kind of disconnected has always um, been a source of grief for some customers. OpenAir attempted to do something a while back that kind of started to broach the two. Um, and I hesitate, to, I hesitate to bring it up, but we'll go ahead and bring it up in here. It's basically creating a project plan using generic resources and then tr creating an initial set of bookings from that project plan. Um, it can support both central and decentralized uh, models. Um, it basically allows the project manager to build out their project plan and then convert that to bookings. Now, there's, I'm making it sound very simple. Um, there's a lot of steps and, and a lot of uh, things that need to be set up for that to really occur. Um, and uh, once they are separated, so once the task assignments are cr create the bookings, at that point they are no longer connected. So if you change the task length in it, it doesn't have anything to do with the booking. So they are separate. So it really doesn't solve the problem of being able to connect the two items and be able to manage them using one or the other. It just allows the creation to come from the project versus creating them from uh, scratch. It does also require booking approvals um, as well as part of the process. So some of the pros, you can create a project plan and then create those initial resource bookings. It does require some assignment profiles and, pro and profile skills and some other things. Again, there's a lot of setup here and a lot of steps uh, between the two. Uh, there is automated workflow with the approval process. Um, it gives the project manager kind of control of the initial resource plan, but at that point it becomes a separate managed uh, set of objects. And then the resource manager then goes in and swaps out the generics for named um, users, um, and then the, resource, the project manager can then go in and assign those named users down to the task. So again, a lot of steps, uh, a lot of moving parts in this feature. Um, the con is, um, you know, in the con, you could say I guess the con with this is the bookings and task assignments are, always are separate, and so and that's pretty much in every, you know, every model we've looked at. Um, just because of the way that OpenAir built the two tools as being managed separately by different audiences. Don't, have not, we haven't implemented this for uh, any customers. I'd be curious to see if anybody's using this that's on the call. The last model um, is a model that we, um, I, I still see from time to time. Um, it's where the project plan is the driver of resource management. Um, so it's more of a bottom-up approach rather than a top-down where you have resources, um, where you're managing resources. Here you're managing a project, and within the project the resource schedule falls out. So this is the use of tasks, task assignments, uh, percent, and assigned hours all kind of working together to generate you know, where people are going to be and when. Um, this is more, this is the ultimate decentralized model because this is project managers basically building out their project plan, putting folks on their task, and then that basically f uh, f rolls into calendar views 
and other reporting of where folks are going to be. Obviously, once you sign fund someone to a task, they immediately become available. And really, the only designation at that point is the stage of the project in some ways, because there's no booking type or, or no categorization. Um, there is a, if you are using this approach, there is an assignment chart that is available. Um, you are all probably familiar with the booking chart, um, which I'm a big fan of. Um, there was an assignment chart. It, it, doesn't, it hasn't been updated the same way the booking chart has. It's a little rudimentary, but it is there, and it does kind of do a similar uh, item where it shows people and where they're going to be and who's over-assigned over, over versus under-assigned. So what's the pro? Uh, the pros are the project plan is the managing of the resource schedule. Now with some additional project management functionality that came out recently, um, it's become a little more palatable if you're looking at this approach because you actually now have a more interactive Gantt chart. So you can drag and drop. Um, you can uh, create predecessor relationships and all of that advanced functionality that for them project plans. Um, that can be, you also have now some inline editing options within your uh, different views. So it has become, uh, project management has gotten better in open air and that allows this uh, task assignment method to work a little better. It also gives you some ability to reforecast. So as you assign folks to work and they haven't done it, it allows you to kind of move those hours forward. Um, and again, depending on how your project plan is set up, you could have dates get automatically moved forward. The cons in this model are um, the lack of granularity. As, as you all know, when you, if you're putting a, a task in and if you're indicating a start date, either whether it's calculating a finish date or you're putting a hard end date, the hours are going to be spread evenly. Hours are going to be spread per resource. So for each resource with assigned hours between those dates using a percentage, it's going to spread those hours evenly. So if it's a six-month task, everyone's going to be shown a bit, uh, busy for those six months at some, at some level. Maybe it's not accurate. So because of that, you may end up really trying to get more granular in your project planning. Um, so you may have to separate tasks so that you get a more accurate view of resourcing. So again, it's still a viable uh, option. A lot of customers are still doing it this way, but it's just important to understand which, what's required to maintain this level of accuracy for, to do any sort of resource um, forecasting or scheduling. So I've only got a couple slides left. I uh, wanted to talk about a couple of options that I've seen that will also work really well. Um, you know, we talked about manual bookings. We've talked about assignments. One option that uh, I've, I've implemented quite a few times for customers with the right environment is booking the task. So, you know, I've seen a lot of customers where they'll go book someone and then they'll go assign them to the task so they can put their time in. Um, where you know, the task assignment really isn't doing anything other than just allowing them to put their time in. Um, so in those scenarios, depending, again, depending on the environment, it might, those customers may want to think about doing bookings to task. If you go to bookings to task route, you can basically, it enables an additional, you know, other than the client and the project, you can now associate to a task on the project. And by doing that, you could enable that booked resource to be able to see that um, project and task on their timesheet. So it kind of shortcuts the need for a project assignment. What's also nice about this is, you know, in a project plan you have assigned users that you can see. Well now, once you enable this feature, you now have booked users that you can see. So you can see within a project plan which users are booked to, your, to each task. Um, so you have that visibility. Um, and uh, so it, again, it, it's, it can be a very uh, effective way to manage not only scheduling, but also manage the timesheet access questions that come up. The downside of this approach is you don't want to have a 50 task project. Um, you need to have like a three task project in this example and this customer. You know, they have a billable task and a non-billable task, and that's what they use to, to uh, allow people to put time into it. So, um, because, you know, obviously if someone's working more than one task in a given week, instead of creating one week task, you're creating three, sorry, one week booking, you're creating three bookings for the same week because each one 
requires a different task. And also, if you have a, a decentral, uh, sorry, a centralized model, gives even more of a problem because you know a resource manager generally doesn't care or know what task a person is going to do on any given week or month. They just know that this person's on this project. So it takes careful consideration to be able to implement this, but in the right environment, um, you know, you, this can be a very effective way to, uh, to manage the timesheet access question against the booking question. One of the, the last feature I want to talk about today um, is bulk editing and copying. Uh, this is a feature that kind of went under the radar. It was in one of the last releases. And um, I think it's got a lot of potential. Um, everyone generally, you know, when they create a project, they create a project from a template, and then they go in and they modify the project from there. Well, now you have the ability to almost create bookings from a template. So you can go in and enable this bulk editing or copying. It becomes another option in the list uh, drop-down where you go run your action and you select all the bookings and you click the button. It gives you an option to bulk edit. And when you hit that, you get the screen here. And it allows you to you can see you can duplicate. Um, the bookings, or you, um, or you can bulk edit existing bookings. So um, very interesting, you know, say, you know, this is our standard bookings, um, and we copy these to start with this set of bookings, and then be able to or duplicate from an existing project to give you a head start on the booking process. Um, so again, it takes the right scenario and the right type of business to benefit from this feature. Uh, but I believe it has uh, some potential uh, to help some customers um, to be able to do this kind of bulk editing, which you never were able to do before. So everyone knows about Top Step. You're on the call. We certainly appreciate everyone participating. I'm going to go ahead and open it up to see if anybody has any questions.